Hello everybody, glad you can make it. My name is Kelly Allen and welcome to another rare plant haul. I'm quite excited about this because honestly, I could be very wrong about this, I can't remember, but it feels like I haven't had new plants in a long time. Obviously I deal with plants every day at the shop, but in terms of actually having some for myself, I don't think I've had any in a while. So I actually have, I have 16 plants. Okay, I know, I know it's a lot. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this video up into two because I just feel like 16 plants is just too much to do in one video. I know a lot of people aren't bothered by that and they'll happily watch a longer video. But honestly, I like to talk about my plants. I like to say a few words here and there about them. You know, I don't just show one plant very quickly and move on. So with that said, I'm gonna split this up into two videos. I haven't necessarily figured out how I'm gonna split them yet. I'm just gonna pick them up and go through them. So without further ado, let's get straight into the haul. But before we start anything, can I just please talk about this? Please, because this is my new philodendron melanochrysum. And yes, I have a very big smile on my face. And honestly, that's because if you think back to, I think at some point last year when I, I think I got a melanochrysum in a haul and it was kind of big for a melano, but it wasn't like super big. And I think I said in that haul, you know, I'm going to keep this. I don't know how long I'm going to keep it. I would probably swap it back for a larger one because really I want, you know, a large melano. So I give you my large melano. I need to name her, so if you'd like to fire off some suggestions for names in the comments, that's great. Providing she lives. So this is the thing about the first plant. She is actually in water right now because she suffered a bit of a journey and I think her roots aren't doing great. I hope you can see that there. You kind of can. I don't want to pick her up because she's in water. But honestly, right now, water is the best chance for her because it's funny. Melanochrysum ship very well. Oh, give me a minute here. Is that going to stay there? There, she can stay like that. So melanochrysum actually do ship pretty well, in my opinion. They're kind of bomb-proof almost. You'd be surprised how well they can ship. But I find when they get larger with larger leaves, they can't. They, they, they go the other way and they get really finicky. But this one so far is okay, despite its roots being a little bit fried in the meal. So I'm going to keep her like this until I'm confident that she's recovered. And to be honest, till I can see some new root growth in there. And then I might, I don't know if I'm going to lecker her or put her in soil. I haven't really figured out what I'm going to do with her. I'm pretty sure she's going to need something to grow up because obviously she's huge. Let me know what you think I should do with this when she does kind of rehabilitate. But just for the obligatory head test, this could be one of the best head tests I've ever done on this channel. I don't even know how, like I have to move back in the frame. There you go. How freaking amazing is that? She is just the most stunning thing. I'm so blessed, so blessed to have this plant. Right, where can I put her? I think I might have to move her back a little bit. Is she okay there? I'm gonna go with, yeah, she's okay there. So that is my big Mel No Cries, by the way. I don't know what to do with her. She needs to rehabilitate. So you might see her in the backdrop of videos. You might not, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit apprehensive about sitting too close to her, so. I don't know, but she will be recouping. So please wish me the best, the best of luck with this beauty because she's absolutely stunning. Right, next plant. I'm gonna have to get them because I may have not really prepared for this video. Okay, so continuing on with the theme of kind of large plants, I do have a plant to show you on Friday that is also large, but I'm just gonna split it up a little bit. So this is like the other large plant that I have to show you. And I've wanted one of these plants for a while as well. I don't know how long it's been since I've wanted one of these. I think I've wanted this plant since I opened my shop because I feel like I sold one or two of them in my shop and I really wanted to keep one for myself and I didn't. So I went out and got myself one. So what is it? So it has a little bit of this lady in it. It has a little bit of melanocrysum in it. I will just pick it up now because she's a little bit big and she's probably going to go on a pole because I just feel that that's what she needs. So they, so excuse the, uh, the really nasty um, plastic and the stakes, but this is philodendron glorious. Now, if you can't tell, it should be reasonably obvious to tell that this plant has, you know, a melanocrysum in it. So this plant is a hybrid of philodendron gloriosum and philodendron melanochrysum. Honestly, I'm just kind of in love. It has this leaf here, this leaf here, uh, this leaf here, and then a leaf that's taken a little bit of a beating and it's grown up the wrong way, this leaf right here. So I think the best thing to do is to probably give her a pole. Again, I don't know if I want to do like soil or lecker. I haven't really figured it out yet. I don't know what I'm going to do but you probably see me repot her over the next, I don't know, few days, few weeks. I, I don't know when that's gonna happen, but yeah, I don't know. 
But yeah, she's she's so beautiful. Look at the honestly, let's see. That's just gorgeous, isn't it? It really is. She's so beautiful. I don't know if I can actually keep her here. Probably going to get a bit much. Let's keep her here anyway, just because she actually looks really, really sexy near those melanos. So we'll just keep her here. I guess I've almost got a bit of a theme here without actually trying to. But my next plant I already own. Okay, I already own it. And no, it's not a Philodendron Florida Ghost for anyone that's about to guess in the comments. It's not. So I have one of these plants and I need to put it up a pole. Surprise, surprise. I'm kind of obsessed with growing things up poles at the minute. Can you tell? But because the plant I have that I want to put up the pole is a little bit more, it's kind of minimal. I wouldn't really say it was leggy, but it just, it's a bit sparse. So what I thought I would do is I'd get a second one. I would place it kind of, you know, in the same place as it at the bottom of the pole. And then I can kind of grow two up just so it looks a little bit thicker because I think it's going to look a little bit just a little bit shit the way it is. And I will show you what that plant is. And that is the Philodendron. Let me get this right. Melanochrysum, again, crossed with Philodendron vericosum, which means they have a red back on the leaves there. It's not that obvious, don't get me wrong. It's not super obvious, but it is there. So yeah, I'm gonna put this at the base of the plant pot, kind of in front of the other one or however have you. And I'm kind of gonna grow them both together up the pole. So yes, I already have one, but I want another one. This plant is actually really special to me because if you have seen my haul, uh, the day that I got this plant, I was kind of crying my eyes out, like a little bit. Totally embarrassing, still totally haven't got over it, but <laughs> this plant does hold a special place in my heart. So I want a really, really pretty one up a pole, looking really beautiful. I may do a repotting video of this girl here and this girl here in the same day because it's it's the same workload really, so I'll probably do that on the same day. You'll probably see that very soon. I will film it for you because why not, right? We all need the extra content these days. It's so pretty. It's tiny. It's not a big one, but it's cute. It's so cute. It's so cute. Look at all these big hearts. I'm so happy today. Can you tell? Oh, I love this plant. Can I put it there? Oh my God, I could have the cutest little... I used to do this all the time, didn't I? It's just really hard to do that now because I don't have the table space that I used to have. So it's actually hard to haul all my plants and put them in front of me. But this, you, you can't deny, this is starting to look real sexy. And the cool thing here is you can kind of see which, you know, where the melanochrysum is in the in these two hybrids. So it's really, really cute. So to add to that for a little bit of a natural progression, one moment. Yet another plant that I'm going to stick up a pole <laughs> because clearly I have a problem. And that is this plant here, Philodendron varicosum. Yes, I know it's nothing special. It's nothing new. There's been, you know, varicosum around for some time, but I've never had this form. What do I mean by that? There are a few different forms of varicosum kind of on the internet. And you'll see what I mean if you start looking for a varicosum plant. This is what I like to call the classic or the original varicosum that is very, very viney has a lot of, you know, hairy stems and has really contrasty veining. Now, not all varicosums I've seen have this. So this is kind of like the one that I have selected to have as my own varicosum. So I plan to also, surprise, surprise, put this up a pole. It's starting to get big foliage already. So I have high hopes that if I did put it on a pole, it's going to go really big and beautiful. I don't know. We'll just have to see. But I put her there. I don't know if I can showcase all of these. There sort of there i think that's the best we're gonna get for all the heart shapes <laughs> so it's probably necessary to do a slight recap so you have philodendron melanochrysum philodendron glorious which is philodendron melanochrysum crossed with philodendron gloriosum then you have philodendron melanochrysum crossed with philodendron varicosum and then you have philodendron varicosum we got there in the end. I think recently, can you tell? But I think recently philodendrons are really starting to kind of take a hold of me. I'm actually like, I can hear my smile. That's how much I'm smiling. Okay, I'm gonna calm down. I'm gonna calm down, I promise. The next two plants I find incredibly interesting. They don't look great right now because I've like kind of staked them up temporarily until I figure out what I'm doing with them. The two plants I have coming up are kind of linked because it's kind of the same plant, but just different forms of it. And I know the first one I pick up a few of you have seen before. You just think it's possibly something else. So let me just grab it. So this plant here is Amidrium. If I can pronounce this properly, it is Amidrium medium, just green form. Now, if, you, if I can show this up to the camera, hopefully that will focus. If I just pull a leaf out of the way because it's getting a bit insane. You see these leaves here. If you notice, 
I will try and put the image up that has been kind of surfing the internet um, of this plant because I think people are calling it a Spider-Man Monstera. And it isn't. It is not a Monstera at all. I did mention this briefly on Instagram the other day. It's not a Monstera at all. It is Amedrium. Amedrium medium. As far as I know, it's just green form. It's very, very beautiful. Well, this is actually a runner just, you know, making its way up the plant. So for full disclosure on how this works, because these guys are actually on my shop, they launch on my shop on Friday. So what happens is when the new leaf comes in, they look like this. This is completely normal, this mosaic pattern. That is how the plant is. So when new leaves emerge, they will have a strong mosaic pattern. And as the leaf gets older, you can kind of see it on this one. It's the only other leaf. If I show you there, oh gosh, it's so hard to show you. There we go. New leaf versus older leaf. To be fair, they're still coming off very contrasted, but basically what I'm trying to say is, that I'm failing to say, is that the older these leaves get, the less the mosaic is. So it won't always stay this awesome. It will fade down, but you do still get to keep some texture when it fades. But it's just a really cool plant. It's not really like a Monstera, even though people are calling it the Spider-Man Monstera. I would say it was closer to an Epipremnum, if anything. To me, that just screams Epipremnum. Obviously, it is not, but you know, the other plant I'm about to show you will really make you think of Epipremnum as well. But yeah, this is Amidrium Medium Green Form, and it is awesome. So, the cool thing about that last plant is that it has kind of a sister, and its sister is blue, as in the same way that Cebu Blue Pothos or Epipremnum, you know, Cebu Blue is blue. <laughs> So where I was going with that. This is a medium medium blue form, or at least that's what I'm calling it right now. If I just show you how amazing it looks. Hopefully it does come off blue on camera. Yeah, it does, 100%. Obviously these are new leaves, so these are a little bit greener right now, but of course they will harden off to be more blue. That's basically what she looks like. How amazing is she? You don't get the mosaic effect with this one. So if you're kind of on the hunt for these, because these are kind of up and coming plants right now, it's kind of up to you whether you want the green mosaic form that fades or you just want a pretty blue one. Like if you're more of a fan of the, the Cebu Blue, then go for this one. If you're more of a fan of just Monstera or you know the, the mosaic vibes, because not everyone likes that, then go for the other one. This one I think is harder to get than that one. Not by a terrible amount, but it is harder to get. It is typically more expensive. That, I think that's just because everyone loves the blue. But I'll show you it again. This one has three leaves on it. No runner on this one, actually. I just face that to the camera. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that is so pretty. Look at that. I hope I'm showing these plants well. I realize this, you know, it's not ideal. I should have probably just picked a pot to put them in. I do apologize. A medium, medium blue form. Very, very, very nice. Very nice indeed. My first blue plant, I think. Mmm, it is. So I'm quite excited about that. Again, don't know if I'm going to pull it, let it climb, what, I don't know. In a way, it would be kind of awesome, maybe. Give me your opinion down below. But I think it might be a little bit awesome to plant these together. So if I plant up, just, just hear me out, hear me out. I know I'm a bit crazy, hear me out. What if I planted the green and the blue kind of together? Like, would that not be kind of awesome? Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do that, because I actually think that's a good idea. Maybe. Where's my last plant? I cannot get my plant. Hang on. There we go. They're in a tub. Which means, if they're in a tub, you know it's shingler time, because normally I put my shinglers in tubs till I know what I'm doing with them. So I have three shinglers in this tub. Oh yes, it's very exciting. I do not have a way of growing them yet, which is a little bit troublesome, but I'm actually going to get my dad to cut me some planks of wood and kind of send them to me because obviously I can't see him right now due to the whole COVID thing, but I'm going to get him to send me a couple of planks of wood so I can plant the shinglers up and grow it in the same way that I'm growing my Dubaia. Only these planks of wood aren't going to be like super sexy and varnished. They'll just be more rustic, could you say? I don't know. Anyway. Let's open my box of tricks. So the first plant, oh, I don't know which one to pick. I'll pick this one because it's on top actually. So the first plant, the first shingling plant that I have to haul for you is this one. I'll do my best to put it on my little hands because it's so cute. But this right here, let me get up to the camera, please focus. This is Raffidophora cryptantha. 
This is the shingler that normally gets confused with Monstera the Buyer because it is quite similar. So if you like Monstera the Buyer and you've never seen this before, this is a super, super, super nice plant to have. It's not super big. It's actually really super small right now, but obviously it will shingle larger and larger as it grows. So I'm going to try and grow that up a little, you know, a little plank of wood. How adorable is it? I don't know if I prefer this to the Buyer. I think I'm, at the minute I might prefer this just because I never really see it. Do you know what I mean? So right now I'm kind of looking forward to it. Obviously my debayer is like, I can't really point to it. My debayer is like in this corner right here. But, so I don't know where I'm going to put this one, but how cute is it? Raphidophora cryptantha. Beautiful, beautiful little shingler. Now let me just put her back while I grab the next shingler out. Right, let me grab this one. This one is not as tightly shingled actually, this one, but it is very cute. So the next shingler I have is also Raphidophora. Can you tell I'm kind of getting into my shinglers? Like my big hearts and my shinglers are kind of, I think that's like a thing for me this year. But the next plant I have is the Raphidophora Hei. I think that's how you pronounce it. This is a much longer shingler. Like if I hold this up against my head, it is quite a lot longer. Obviously it's it's been basically sprayed with water and put in a box to keep it all nice. But this is her. She's very, very nice. She's not tightly shingled which is just, you know, how it is. Let's look at the draw. But how pretty is she? Not a Raffa Defora that I see get tons of press. But then again, I'm not really looking for it on Instagram. I don't even think I follow the hashtag, so I could be very wrong about that. But how pretty is she? It's quite a sturdy little shingler. It's not the same as Raffa Defora Cryptantha. There is much, much difference. I'll hold the two up next to each other just in case you're kind of wondering which one you might prefer. There you go. That's the difference. Very, very cute though. As I say, it's longer. It needs a plank for itself as well. So I will be getting one for her. But I quite like her. But wait till you see the next one. Oh my goodness, they're all getting tangled in one another. Please don't. Ah, that's all one plant. Oh wow, there's a lot of root on that. Oh, okay. Damn. She has a little bit of soil on her leaves, so I apologize for that. So this is so special. And I don't think I've heard of this one. This is like a little bit new to me and I'll explain a little bit more about it once I've shown you it. But this is Raphidophora Hei variegated. Yes, yes really, a variegated shingler. I know, I know, it's, it's, it's awesome. But here she is. I'm just holding the root ball in my hands because there's actually quite a lot of it. If I can get up to the camera there, that is her, obviously I've got soil on my hands. How beautiful. Now, what you may notice about this variegation, it is very similar to a philodendron Florida ghost kind of variegation. So the variegation that's coming in at the top will fade down over time. So it will come in brighter and it will fade down to pretty much a green. And if you actually look down the stem, you can see that happening. You can see that it's obviously really variegated at the top. And then by the time you get to here, it's still variegated, but it's fading down. So Really, really beautiful. Not the typical variegation that you might get or, you know, expect, but it's such a great find and I'm just desperate to see what this looks like. I don't know how long it takes to um, to fade down either, to be honest, because obviously I've never owned it before, but I cannot wait to mount this one. This is This one's probably the one I'm most excited for. Second to that is probably the Cryptantha. Third to that is probably the Hei. I think that's like my least one that I'm excited about. I can't wait to grow all of these at poles. I don't know where I'm gonna put them. I don't know how I'm gonna keep them, but I cannot wait. How pretty is this? Raphidophora Hei variegata. Very, very, very awesome. And that <laughs> is essentially part one of my plant haul. As I said before, I do like to talk about these plants a little bit and just, you know, give you my opinion on them, you know, what's cool about them, what isn't cool about them, if they're new and, you know, haven't necessarily been seen before. So I apologize for splitting this up. That is not something I would usually do, but I really want to be able to talk about these plants a little bit more, show them for a little bit longer on camera and kind of do them justice. So that is the reason for that today. So on Friday's haul, you should get another big plant, a couple of variegated plants and a kind of reasonably rare plant. I've mentioned it before on the channel and a dupe for that as well. So I've actually got a lot. Oh, and a really strange hybrid as well. I've got lots coming. 
I cannot wait to show you all these plants because I can't post them on Instagram until you've seen the videos. So I have to wait. I have to sit on all these beautiful plants and just wait. Anyway, I've probably kept you ages, so I won't keep you any longer. I will see you on Friday. Have a great week. I hope self-isolation is treating you all okay. I hope you guys manage to go out and get some fresh air, whether that be on your balcony, in your backyard, in your front yard, just even sitting by an open window, anything. I hope that you're all very well. I wish everyone good health and good mental health as well. So I will see you on Friday for some really, really awesome plans. Bye guys.